leveling nuts, setting sequence columns, and plumbing the column. Up to this point in the erection process, anchor bolts and embeds have been set by the concrete contractor, steel has been yarded and or load lists have been predetermined, and steel has been dressed. Hey, just wanted to stop you and tell you thank you for watching. It really does support us when you watch. Take the extra step, like and subscribe this video and or follow us. It would really help us out. Carry on, enjoy the rest of the video. Check us out at workerefficiency.com for more videos just like this. See ya. We are now ready to move on to setting our first steel assemblies. The first steel assemblies to be installed will be our columns. Now, before we can pick and set columns, we need to remove the template plate if it hasn't already been removed and level the three remaining leveling nuts we were talking about earlier and the remaining nuts on all anchor bolts in our sequence. Remember how we talked about the GC setting the elevation for one nut and then shooting it or spray painting the nut with spray paint? Well, now it is on us, the iron workers, to set the other three leveling nuts. First, make sure that the nut that was spray painted hasn't moved. That's why it's painted. If it's moved, you can adjust it back to where it should be based on the paint. We need a long spirit level so that we can level out the other three nuts at the anchor bolt footing. Rest the level on one end of the top face of the nut that was shot, and then the other end on the face of the diagonal nut. Raise the other nut up till our bubble in our spirit level reads level. Now, level the other two nuts using our shot nut as our base reference. It's best to check level by forming a box and an X using the spirit level. As long as we can move our spirit level around to all the other nuts and it reads level, then we can be sure that we set ourselves up for a straight plumb column. A straight column is what we refer to in steel construction as a plumb column. No, this is not plumbing. Plumbing is straight, vertical, correct, in line. I don't know what else to say here. Straight. Okay, our nuts are level. Let's set some columns. It's not like we're just going to go and set every column right there and then. Remember, we are following a sequencing plan. Our plan for our first sequence calls that we work within grid lines F, H, and 2 to 4 for levels 2 and parts of level 3. We can see these sections highlighted in red in our erection drawings, specifically the partial framing plan level 2 drawing and section drawings of embed elevations. This is a space we'll be erecting first based on our erection plan. Now let's look at these specific columns that we need to set for these grid lines. And for that, we'll turn to our column layout plan. Here is our layout plan, and we will look to grid lines F, H, and 3 to 2. We will set these four columns here, 861A, 192A, 196A, and 197A. There are actually only 12 columns in total for this four-story building. The perimeter of our building, you need to remember, are tilt-up concrete panel walls, which have embeds set into the concrete. Okay, back to our columns. The columns will what we call be tailed so that we can set the column standing straight. Unlike beams where we will be lifting from the center, we are going to set a choker around the top portion of the column with the choker resting against the plates of the top connection clips. Since this is such a tall column, 58 feet, four inches to be exact, we need to be able to loosen the choke once we set it. So we will typically wrap a tagline around the choker portion of the sling so we can loosen it up after installation and remove it. If that doesn't work, then we need to get up to it and loosen it with a boom. Once we have our choker positioned and tight with a tagline attached to it, we will slowly lift the column vertically. We will then direct the column using clear communication with the crane operator over to the anchor bolt embed that the column will be resting on top of. Quick note, make sure that the template plate has been removed and that the nuts are level. Using verbal or hand signals the entire time, we will get this column positioned where we can lower the column through the base plate's holes and through the anchor rod at the embed. Let's take a step back here for a second. Orientation, orientation, orientation. This is so important and can cause a headache of issues if we set our column incorrectly. What does that mean? Our column can technically be set in four different directions if we have a square base plate. And when there are many connection clips in a column, we need to make sure that we have the right connection plates facing their correct direction so we can connect steel. What if you set a column with a three hole clip facing north and the beam you need to rig to the column has six holes in it? You then notice the six hole clip facing south. The column was set incorrectly and this is a mistake that happens more often than you would think. Typically, columns will come from the shop with an N or north or potentially S or south scribe into the face of the column that needs to face project north or south. For example, our assembly drawing here for column 861A has a detail here at the bottom of our column. MKFC South, shorthand for Mark Face South. In the shop, we will mark that side of the column with South indicators, and we can even take it another step by marking the North Face with paint stick as well. This helps the iron workers in the field identify the orientation of the column quickly and efficiently. 
If our column was not marked from the shop, then it requires us, iron workers, in the field to look at our assembly to determine south or north face of the column. Then we will simply look at our erection sheet, such as our column layout plans, to see the project north compass to see what direction that column needs to be set. Fairly straightforward. So orientation, orientation, orientation. A simple thing can cause such a headache if not paid attention to. Back to setting our column. Now that our column is resting on the anchor bolt embeds, for safety, put the top washer and nuts on for safety, but don't tighten them down. Why? Because we need to make sure that our column is plumb and level. Ah, there's that word again. We need to make sure that our column is straight and square. This is where we're going to take our spirit level again. This time we're going to place the level on the column itself in a vertical fashion. This is where it is helpful to have a magnetized spirit level. Check all four sides. If our column is straight and level according to the spirit level, awesome. If it's not straight and the bubble is off center, then it is not plumb. Depending on which way your column is leaning, the nuts that are not the shot nut by the GC need to be adjusted slightly to make that column straight. This is where it is important to keep the column rigged to the crane the entire time so that you can ease pressure off the nuts if needed to make micro adjustments, turning the nuts to get the column plumb. The trick to do this is to only adjust the nuts on either side of the shot nut. Those nuts will allow you to adjust the column forward or backward and or side to side. Leave the nut across from the shot nut alone and only bring that nut up to level once the column is plumb. Make micro adjustments until the bubble in your spirit level is level on all your column sides. Your column is now plumb and we can compact wrench down our top nuts to secure the column. When you wrench your nuts, make sure you wrench them down in an X pattern. Don't go in a circle. With the column plumb and secure, we can communicate with the crane operator to give slack in the rigging. We can then tug our tag line that is attached to the choke itself to loosen it up and over the column freeing it. In the case for our office building, these are super long columns. So just leaving a 58 foot four inch column standing solo only by compacted down nuts. I mean, these nuts are strong, but this is also just a long column. To make sure that the column is really safe and secure, we are going to rig and connect one beam from panel to column to make sure it can't get away from us. With our column installed in plumb, we can now move on to the other three columns that need to be set in our sequence. That is leveling nuts, setting columns, and plumbing columns. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate it. Like and subscribe, follow and share this video. It really does help us out. If you wanna learn more, check out www.workerefficiency.com to find out more about our training courses and the app that is coming out soon and it will blow your mind.